Welcome back to an episode of Carson's Aquatics. Today, we're gonna be feeding all my pets. Now, I've done a couple videos like this in the past, I think twice actually, where I just feed all of my pets in the same video. It has been a while since I've done one of those videos and I've gotten a lot of new pets, a lot of new setups. And you guys have been asking for this video a lot recently, so I decided to just make another one. And we're just gonna hop right into this video. To start, we're going to head back to the deck to the baby box turtle enclosure, because I know that's like all of you guys' favorite, so we're gonna start with them. And here we are at the baby box turtle enclosure. You guys literally Really love these guys and they already heard me opening up the lid they already came running over we're not gonna leave them waiting I'm gonna grab their food bowl right here get the mulch out of there and right here we have their food right here we have some worms they literally go crazy for these things gonna dig one of these out try and get as much of the dirt off as we can there we go to all my worm lovers out there I'm sorry uh, close your eyes now it's about to get nasty and split the worm in half just so both turtles get an equal part and they don't have to fight over it. I also like to put in some kind of fruit or vegetable. I thought today was a carrot kind of day. So I'm gonna put that in there, kind of slice it into smaller pieces so they can fit it in their mouth. This worm's trying to escape. There's no escaping this, buddy. You got a one-way ticket to Turtle Town. So that's enough carrot. They probably won't even eat all that. Get the calcium powder, sprinkle that on there. Get everything covered in calcium powder. This is ready to go. I'm gonna bring it back over to the enclosure. Boop. And one of them is right here. Oh, both of them are right here. And they should know that it's in the bowl. I think they just see me and they think I have it. Guys, up here, up here. He got his worm. The other guy's on his way up. He got his worm, and they're just going to go their own separate ways with their own little pieces of worm, and then they will come back and get the carrots later on. There they go. These little guys are growing up so fast. You can already see they've gotten much bigger. And this guy, and this guy just went in the water with his worm. Okay, going for a little swim. Oh, he's poking his head out of the log. Buddy, are you good? I am so excited for these guys to outgrow this enclosure so that I can build another one. But anyway, the water is looking a little bit rough, so I'm gonna switch that out. Take that, dump it, put it back in, get some fresh water, dechlorinate it, of course, and pour it on in there. And that green stuff is just algae. That's not harmful at all. Every week or so though, I do scrub the algae out, but not today. And there we go. The baby box turtles are good to go. I'm now going to lock up their enclosure and we're going to move on to the next animal. And I just made my way inside to my bedroom, AKA the fish room. I call it the fish room because of the five aquariums I have in here. Maybe wondering where's the fifth and it's actually under the 55. This is a quarantine tank. I'll get to that in just a second, but we are going to start with my 20 gallon long turtle tank. And you can actually see there Sheldon Jr. And Toby are basking together. That is just so adorable. Sheldon's gonna jump in. There he goes. What's up, Toby? So to feed this tank, first of all, we're gonna do some fish flakes because there are a couple of Buenos Aires Tetras in here. Gotta get Sheldon Jr. away from the flakes or else he'll eat all of them. And there go the Tetras. There are two of them in here because I moved one of them in here. There were originally three in there. I moved the one in here and I am going to move all three in here, but I'm doing them one at a time, about a week in between each, just so there's not an ammonia spike in this tank. So those guys are fed. Sheldon Jr. is kind of chomping on some of those fish flakes, but for him, I do have these hatchling pellets. <laughs> He's going for that one flake that's stuck up on the glass. Junior, come here. Stop eating the flakes. Come here. There we go. So I like to bring them over to this corner because the water is pretty static right here. So the pellets don't really float anywhere and you can eat them easily. And I drop in a good amount of them. These are small pellets. And while they're young, you want to feed them lots of protein so they can start growing. So he'll munch on all those pellets. And we've also got some dried shrimp right here. I'll drop in just a few of those. There we go. He's too distracted by me that he doesn't even see the food. Oh, there he goes. So Sheldon Jr. is fed. Now we just got Toby in this tank, my baby pink belly side neck. He is still very shy and doesn't really like to eat in the tank. So what I do is get a little container, put like a half inch of water in it, set that right here, grab him, set him in there. And then for him, I also do these hatchling pellets. He isn't really a huge fan of these yet, but I'm trying to get him used to them. Put a good amount of those in there. And also for Toby, I've got these turtle treats. This consists of dried shrimp, dried mealworms, and dried crickets. I heard that you're not really supposed to feed these pink belly side necks shrimp because they can get addicted to them and literally not eat anything else except for shrimp. So I avoid feeding Toby shrimp. Instead, I feed him these dried mealworms. These are a little big for him, so I break them up into smaller pieces. 
just like that. I usually do a couple of those. There we go. And boom, missed it. There he goes. So he will just munch on those dried mealworms. We're now gonna move on to the 25 gallon community tank. I'm gonna move Toby over to the desk. I feed these guys flakes as well as frozen bloodworms, which we will feed in just a second. But I feed the flakes every day and then those bloodworms I throw in like two or three times a week. So we're gonna let them finish up those flakes and then we will get to the blood worms. While that's going on, we're gonna move on to the 55 gallon American Cichlid tank. For these guys, it's kind of the same deal as the community tank. I feed them these pellets every day and then mix in the blood worms two or three times a week. So we will also get them some blood worms today. I always like to get them hyped up by tapping on the lid and shaking the bottle in front of the tank. They know it's time to eat, drop in the pellets and they will all come up to the surface and feast. Here comes Kobe. We will get them their blood worms in just a moment. Moving on to the beta tank. This is Lou, my platinum beta. Oh, and yeah, you guys don't know this yet. Those two albino bristlenose placos that I got in my mystery wheel video. I moved them from the breeder box in the 25 gallon over to the 10 tall. I looked it up. These placos can get along with the beta fish and they do perfectly fine. They've been in here for like almost three weeks. So yeah, there's the one of them. I just saw the other one earlier today. It's the same kind of deal for him. He gets pellets every day and then blood worms two or three times a week. We're gonna drop in his pellets. There they go. Moving on down to my five and a half gallon quarantine tank. If you watched my video where me and Jake set up a green spotted puffer tank, you would have heard us talking about these neon tetras. We took these out of his 10 gallon tank to make room for that puffer fish and I took them in. But the thing is they actually have a disease called cotton mouth, which basically you can kind of see that one. It deforms their mouth. It's like a fungal infection, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, look at that. And in the worst cases, it will deform their mouth so bad to the point where they cannot even eat and they will starve to death. So this is their quarantine tank. I have been treating this tank. Hopefully they can get all healed up, but these guys, I don't give them anything special. They just get flakes and those flakes will kind of start to make their way down and they'll all start feasting. Yep, and there they all go munching away. Luckily, all these guys are still able to eat. Their cotton mouth isn't that bad yet, and hopefully it doesn't get to that point. So that's it for them. Now we are gonna drop in blood worms for this tank, this tank, and that tank. There we go. And all these fish will just munch away on these. Literally all freshwater fish absolutely love blood worms. We're now gonna give some to Lou, the beta fish, and I'm just gonna grab them with my hand. And there they go. And he's just chilling on the bottom right now. You know what, Lou? I'm not even gonna wait on you, bro. We're just gonna move on to the 55, and we're just gonna dump the rest of these guys in there. And there they all go. They're all gonna start munching. It's kind of weird. The green terror cichlid has really never been a fan of bloodworms. He just never eats them. He only eats pellets. But hey, that just leaves more for the other cichlids. Oh, kind of forgot Toby was still in here. Gonna grab him and put him back in his tank. There you go, buddy. So everything I have in my room is fed. We still have two more enclosures to feed. The first being the basement frog pond. I set it up a while ago and I haven't mentioned it since. So let's go take a look. And here we have the indoor frog pond. This lid I actually didn't have in my last video, but I added it on there just so nothing can jump out. This is home to my three African clawed frogs. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I really don't like this setup. Pretty soon here, I'm hoping to move these three African clawed frogs into like a 40 gallon breeder because this tub is just ugly, it's hard to clean, and I feel like in an aquarium, these frogs would be so much easier to see. You can actually see one right there. So yeah, hopefully pretty soon I'll be switching this to a 40 gallon breeder. But for these guys, I do feed them these Reptomin reptile pellets. Even though there's a turtle on the front of it, this is made for aquatic turtles, newts, and frogs. So I just grab a bunch of those, toss them in. These three frogs are literally huge, so we gotta do a good amount. But yeah, these frogs are super cool. I actually like them a lot. Let me know if you wanna see more videos on these guys. Like I said, I do wanna set up that new tank. But yeah, 
these guys are good to go. Oh yeah, and also I have this LED strip. This is on a timer, so I don't have to like come down here and turn it on every single day. So yeah, that's it for the frog pond. Now let's head back upstairs. And that leaves one enclosure for us to feed, none other than my front yard koi pond. But if you take a closer look, you actually can't see any koi in there. That's because they all hide during the day. So for that reason, I feed them in the evening. So I will be back out here later tonight when the sun starts to go down and these koi come out for food. And it is later that night and here we are out at the koi pond. And right there, you can actually see the giant goldfish we got in my last video. I've not chosen a name for him yet, so keep dropping the names down below. But these guys are ready to eat. So I'm gonna get their pellets out, get a little handful of those, drop them on in. And here they come. And I think one or two of the koi are over in that other pocket. So I'm gonna toss some over to them. Yeah, there's no way you can see over there. And we'll drop in a few more for these guys. Try and get them to come back up. Yep, there's the butterfly. These guys aren't very hefty eaters yet. They are still real small, but eventually they won't be so shy. So now everything is fed and I'm now going to head back inside so I don't get eaten alive by mosquitoes. That is going to wrap up this video. Today's comment of the day goes out to Ishanthrox. Ishanthrox? I don't know. I've been with you since 9k and I've been loving your work until then. Keep up your good work forever. I've never won a shout out, so I would like to win a shout out. Here's your shout out. <laughs> and if you want your comment to be the comment of the day in the next video, all you got to do is drop a comment down below and that could happen. If you liked this video, be sure to hit that like button. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, turn on post notifications, and I am going to see you in the next video. Oh snap, bruh.